So in this talk, I'm going to continue with something I started in a previous video, which is explaining if you have a point of local extremum, you get what's called a critical point. Yeah, and, and in the process, I'll define critical point exactly. Now, in the previous video, I, I explained that if you have a point of local maximum at some point, uh, then the directional derivative in any direction at the point, if it exists, has to be zero. Right? Yeah. And our logic was, well, you just restrict the function to that line, given by moving along the unit vector, then you make it a function of one variable, use single variable calculus to say it's a critical point there, and then say the direction that is just that dead weight of that function of one variable. Now I want to sort of give a version of this, which is more useful for nice functions, and that is the gradient vector version. So recall, the gradient vector is written like nabla f of c. It's a vector that describes how the function is changing at or near the point. Okay? It's sort of the derivative of the function. Okay? At the point, but it's a vector. And the, the magnitude describes how quickly the function is changing. The direction describes the direction along which the change is concentrated. Also recall that for any direction, the directional derivative in that direction is the unit vector for the direction, dot product with the gradient vector, okay, if the gradient vector exists. So if the gradient vector exists, then the direction derivative must exist in every direction mm -hmm. and must be equal to the dot product. Now you can have situations where the direction derivatives exist, but the gradient vector doesn't. Mm -hmm. But if the gradient vector exists, then the direction derivatives are given by this formula. Now. Now, if you have a local maximum, we said that every direction derivative is zero if it exists. Okay. Now, if the gradient vector exists, what can you say? Hmm? Think. So, if the gradient vector exists. Okay, let's just get this out again. So, the gradient vector exists. Mm -hmm. For every unit vector, the directional derivative exists, okay, so we are in the exists case, which means that for every unit vector, if you have a point of local maximum, for every unit vector, the directional derivative is zero. zero, which means that the gradient vector is a vector with the property that its dot product with every unit vector is zero. zero. Now, what kind of vector would have that property that the dot product with every unit vector is zero? Zero. And actually, this, this thing is the definition of critical point. For a function of multiple variables. Can you just repeat the logic again? How did we get, get this from this? Well... First, we know if f has a local maximum at a point, hmm. the directional derivative <coughs> must be zero if it exists. For every direction. Mm -hmm, for every direction. Hmm. And we also know the relationship between the uh, directional <coughs> derivative and the gradient vector. If the gradient vector exists. So if the gradient vector exists, then all directional derivatives exist, mm -hmm. and they have this relation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so if we the were... gradient vector exists, then... It must be zero. Why? Because the dot product of the gradient vector <coughs> with any unit vector u must be zero. And if you have a vector whose dot product with every unit vector is zero, that vector has to be the zero vector. Mm -hmm. uh, one way of seeing that is you just take the unit vector along the direction of the vector itself if it's non-zero, and that should give you something non-zero. There's many ways of seeing, ways of seeing that. Uh, now, computationally, I just remind you, usually the gradient vector has a nice expression, nice way of describing it. If the gradient vector exists, what does that mean? Like, how is it, how is it uh, described if it exists? It's the partial derivative of Its x. coordinates are the partial derivatives, right? Mm -hmm. So this in particular would imply that all, are we here? Yeah. All partials 
first order partials of f at c are zero. That's just this subcase, yes, or the gradient vector doesn't exist. But actually, you can you can sort of say it a little more strong. So, so the way I've written it is a little weaker than what you have. You actually have, since all directional derivatives are zero if they exist, one sort of condition you can get is that all partials are zero if those individual partials exist. Okay, so you can get here because remember, partial derivatives are directional derivatives in what directions? U. Well, what is U? So if so you basically take a unit vector along just the direction of one variable, right? Mm -hmm. So actually there's, there's sort of multiple slightly different definitions of critical point, which basically is because of the different meanings of derivatives that are floating around here. But definitely one way you can sort of computationally try to narrow down the candidates for local maximum is you first compute all the partials okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, figure out for each partial what are the points where it's uh, zero and where it doesn't exist okay and 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 those give you the points so what i mean is you you want to figure out the points where for every partial it's either zero or it doesn't exist and and then it's likely if you have continuity assumptions if the gradient vector exists then then that the gradient vector is also zero if it exists so in most cases these all these formulations are equivalent direction that is zero partial that is zero gradient vector is zero but you have these kind of weird counter examples where one thing exists and the other doesn't okay? so in in the videos where we talk about how to do this practically i'll go into those in a little more detail but in practice you just sort of set each of the partials equal to zero Figure out where it's not and take the solve and find the candidates and those are your critical points. Okay. And now what do you think we'll need to do next? We'll we have to devise a test to figure out whether a given critical point gives you a point of local max or min or neither. Okay, that's going to be sort of the next step. Uh, if you are building the parallel with the single variable calculus, and that we'll see in subsequent videos.